Everyday people from our community are changing the way we view our world through the images they take. All About Photography are sharing these stories for your inspiration. We believe photography is for everybody. Where will your camera lead you? Yeah, hi, my name's Peter Odekirken and uh, I've always, as a young boy, had a particular passion in wildlife and in birds, and especially the parrot family. So, as I grew older, I always wanted to try and get illustrations of them because if you looked in books, they were all paintings, and although commendable, they didn't really give me the sort of image that I wanted to see which you get in photography. So I had the opportunity working for Syro Wildlife Research to meet one of Australia's best bird photographers, his name is Graham Chapman, and Graham actually started me off and told me I should get an SLR and try and get my own images. So I did that and with a limited amount of success because I only had a 200 millimeter lens and of course, as you grow a bit older too, you start looking at ladies and I got married and had children and of course you have a commitment to raising that family. So for me, birds and photography went on the back burner. As I had an opportunity to visit many countries around the world with my work, it gave me the opportunity to see different species and I used to try and include at least a day or two where I'd be away from work and try to photograph or see some of those species. So I was very lucky to go around in many parts of the world. I've been into South America, the Caribbean, into uh, Africa and Australia and the South Pacific. So I've been very fortunate that way. And it enhanced my passion to keep on trying to get photographs, particularly of parrots. And because of that, I've become known to have a reasonable collection of images. And I now do quite a few presentations around the world. I've spoken in the USA, I've spoken in Holland, South Africa, New Zealand, and of course, Australia. I've been involved in a lot of conservation efforts in regards to parrots, where I've provided footage and photographs to these projects so that they can actually use that conservation message to tell children to be aware of the fact that these birds need to be conserved for future. And that meant that my passion just kept on growing and particularly to teach people and to make them aware of the threats these species are under. I think it would be quite nice if you guys could accompany me and have a look at my collection and we'll do that right now. Okay, these are my aviaries and I have a number of species that I have a lot of interest in. Over here are African grey parrots. They have been very, very much exploited in the wild. The local people there are obviously not very uh, wealthy and it is a way of income. So unfortunately, these birds have been really captured to significant numbers where they're a threat in the wild. And uh, we can only hope that this disc doesn't continue any further. So there's a pair of African greys there. Another pair of African greys. I breed African greys. This is the race Timne. It's a slightly smaller than the nominate race. And it's rather a uh, a rare bird these days in the wild. That's the big thing because they had a very short uh, and very small distribution and that meant that any sustained harvesting of the wild population meant a real problem for them and uh, this is one of the issues that the African grey parrot is facing at the moment in Africa. Okay, we'll head on along here. I also keep a number of Australian species. Turquoisines are not a rare species in captivity, but unfortunately many people have bred these birds so that there's a lot of mutations. And mutations don't breed the true type wild bird. And that's a big concern because 
We don't want to have all these mutations. Yes, it's interesting for certain aviculturists, but for me, it is important to sustain the actual wild bird. So I try as much as possible to keep, as uh, these birds are becoming difficult to obtain actually, to have a purebred turquoisine. So I try my best to make sure that I keep breeding true to type. Over here we have the wonderful and noisy chattering lorry. This bird is found in Indonesia and in the islands of uh, the Moluccas. Uh, this particular race is found on the island of Halmahera. This bird is suffering from uh, captive requirements from local people. They are very commonly kept sitting on a, a little perch outside the, uh, their premises, uh, which are usually not much more than a hut. Uh, so very often captured and under threat in Indonesia. So some bird that I feel that we should be concerned about. And along here we've got a number of species of lorries, but particularly of interest would be the Duvenbodes or brown lorry. And here's a young bird that I've been fortunate enough to breed. You can see there's a youngster here, a young male and that's a young female here. This bird is found on the, uh, you've got a central mountain chain in New Guinea, and on the northern side, the lowlands there, are where you find the actual Duvenbodes or brown lorry. Next door here, we have a bird from the Solomons known as the Cardinal lorry. Extremely beautiful bird, and really a great pleasure to keep in captivity. This bird is very common in the coconut palms, feeding on the inflorescence of the, the, the flowers of the coconut tree. And it's a very common bird in the Solomon Islands. Black cockatoo. This is the subspecies from southwest Western Australia, known as the forest red-tailed black cockatoo. Uh, also called the naso, which is its subspecies name. Now, quite a few people do breed black cockatoos in captivity, but most of these breedings relate to being a fact that they hand reared the youngsters. So after the chick hatches, they'll take the chick from the parents and then hand rear it using a formula. I am very proud to say that this particular pair of birds have actually reared their own chick. And I think that is a very important thing uh, in relation to keeping birds in captivity. A lot of people may think that aviculture is contrary to the conservation of birds in the wild, but in actual fact, it can complement captive uh, birds, can complement what we are learning about these birds and help with wild birds in the future. Examples are like the actual condor in, uh, uh, in California. The Californian condor is really still in existence because of captive breeding and this is what we need. We need to be able to work with the wildlife authorities to make sure that these birds are there for our children to see in the future in the wild. That is the most important thing that we want to achieve. This is one of Australia's most beautiful birds and no doubt one of the world's most beautiful birds, the Major Mitchell cockatoo from inland Australia. The female is on the left hand side and the male is on the right. And as you see, they are displaying quite a bit because they're a little bit perturbed about our presence in the aviary. But they are a very nice bonded pair of Major Mitchell cockatoos. Well, I hope you uh, have enjoyed seeing some of my collection, a small part of my collection. Uh, it is something that keeps me busy but I also travel around the world and also Australia to see them in the wild, to learn from them in the wild. And this is something I'd like to share with you at TEDS, uh, at our uh, a seminar that we'll be holding uh, fairly shortly. So please come and support us and support me in hoping to establish a criteria for the conservation of these parrots and let people know that we need to do something to conserve them, make sure they're there for posterity. If this video has inspired you, we'd love you to share your visions in the comments below. And please subscribe to our channel.